2022 was arguably one of the worst years for Kenya's horticultural sector, and that's just in the last five years. In the first nine months of the year, the value of cut flowers, fruits and vegetables exported from the East African nation were 38.5% below where they were in the same period a year earlier. That's a gigantic drop. Now, half a billion dollars in revenue sounds like a fair bit of money for nine months. That's an average of around $45 million or so every month. But when you put it into context, it becomes pretty clear why 2022 is en route to being a fairly disastrous year. Horticulture exports usually earn the country about a billion dollars a year. Even after a 6.6% dip in 2019, exports grew in 2020 and 2021, the really deep years of the pandemic. Assuming Q4's exports are in line with historical averages, the full year revenue number could be around $680 million, and that would represent a year on year decline of 47%. So, what exactly happened here? In looking at the data for this story, my initial hypothesis was the fact that, well, Kenya's had its worst drought in 40 years, so that might explain the dip. But as the CEO of the Kenya Flower Council, Clement Tulesi, told me a few hours ago, the drought was actually a non-issue. Here's why. We were hit uh, with a huge inflation in the market, especially our major markets, in, in, in which is Europe. And also in the US, we could see the same trend, and many other markets were not performing. And that means that people have to make a choice between if they are going to import the product that we sell or they try to source them as locally as, as possible. But also for others, the, the cut flowers, of course, they are uh, ornamentals and uh, people have to make a choice if they have to continue buying cut flowers or they have to spend their money on uh, other essential commodities. So, so this we was more of a that, story uh, about um, demand in Western Europe essentially going down rather than the drought story in East Africa last year? Uh, I wouldn't say that it's much to do with drought. Of course, drought also has a part. But when you look at the margins that you're talking about, the proportion, it has everything to do with the market. The market has not been performing. Uh, and uh, the cost of uh, doing business, especially freight, has remained very, very high. So the margins have been very, very low. When you, when you speak of competition uh, within the African continent, or at least in, in the markets that you compete with, uh, Western Europe, United Kingdom, where, who's filling in the, 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 the gap, so to speak, that's been left by Kenyan produce? You need to understand that we don't export a whole lot of, uh, of uh, products. For cut flowers, if you look at varieties, yes, we can say that uh, we export a lot, but we are pre predominantly a uh, rose uh, producing and exporting country. Uh, the rest of the, of the flowers, the market uh, sources from all over the globe, I can tell you. The South Americans, for example, Ecuador and Colombia are doing much better than we are doing because they have a, a huge product range compared to us who are pre predominantly doing roses. So this is uh, something we need to diversify. But it becomes even worse when we look at fruits. At the moment, the fruit that we're exporting is only avocado. We are trying in a small way with uh, mangoes, but uh, some of the mangoes that we grow in here uh, are not uh, what the market is looking for. So it's only avocado on the fruit side. But uh, uh, vegetables, yes, you could say it, there's, a, there's a good range, but we have competition from the legs of Morocco. You know, they're giving us a uh, huge, huge competition. Indeed, I hear you. Um, I want to go back to something that you mentioned a little earlier, concerns around freight. I know freight was an issue the last time that we spoke. Uh, the, 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 air, the air cargo capacity simply wasn't there. When it was there, it was really, really highly priced. Is that, has that situation changed or is it still roughly the same? No, it hasn't changed. We are surprised that uh, when we look at uh, other, other uh, prices of other commodities, for example, the cost of uh, fertilizer, for example, it has come down marginally. Uh, and many others, but cost, the cost on freight has remained uh, double of what we were paying uh, pre-COVID. Today, we are still exporting at about uh, 2.8 to $3 per kilo. You know, before COVID, it was basically around 1.3 to 1.5 kilos per ki I mean, uh, dollars per kilo. What, what, sort of feedback, what sort of feedback are you getting from, from the likes of Kenya Airways and, and Ethiopian Airlines? Because, you know, they keep saying that, you know, cargo has been a fantastic growth opportunity for us. It's, you know, helped to pad the margins when the pandemic hit. What feedback are, are, are you getting from them when you tell them, look, these prices are simply unsustainable? You need to understand one thing, that Kenya Airways cannot guarantee us capacity because they, we can, they can only give us barely capacity. They don't have... Uh, freight freighters who can uh, pack our products uh, 
exclusive, exclusively in those uh, aircraft and, and flow them. So the, the uh, belly capacity is really small. So we more or less depend a lot on the foreign airlines who also have a quota. They cannot just come in uh, at will and uh, move everything that we have. So it is, it is just shocking. For us, we want to ask the government to allow in, at least for now, as we go towards uh, uh, Valentine's Day and up to Mother's Day, to allow in much more foreign airlines to come in, that probably will have uh, an impact on uh, bringing down the cost. But it's as, it has, uh, as it has remained, uh, with the monopoly that is there, the cost will always remain up. I want to go back to something you mentioned a little earlier, the, the job implications of this decline in revenue. When you have something on this scale, declines of you know 40%, 50%, 60%, um, inevitably some companies may look at that sort of revenue cut and say, you know what, this really isn't worth it. We might as well just fold, uh, close our doors and go home. Uh, do you think that may extend into deeper job losses in 2023? It is likely. I can tell you, it is likely from what, uh, what we are seeing uh, the companies continue to struggle the way they are. Uh, a few uh, companies will just say, okay, that's it. Uh, we can do something else, you know? So that is a worry because we support a lot of people. Over 200,000 people are employed within this sector. So you can imagine what that actually means if one company probably that has employed 1,000 people uh, closes shop. That is a serious thing.